Hello, welcome to another episode of There I Said It, third installment about the spiritual gifts. How can we receive these spiritual gifts or how do we recognize what they are? Or maybe if you're of the belief that all the Holy Spirit in all power comes upon you at salvation, which I'm open to that, that interpretation as a possibility or maybe even a probability, but that seed still needs to grow right? It needs to have water on it and sunlight and soil and the word. And the, so how do we unlock that seed? How do we allow that seed to get opened up and to grow and to produce these spiritual giftedness, right? All right. Well, that's what this is about. Um, don't be a naysayer, by the way. Maybe the, there's someone that's just like a wolf in sheep's clothing or someone that just wants to pick apart the preaching and say, well, that's not true. And this isn't true. And this isn't true. We know who you are. And you love to make little, you know, comments on videos and stuff. And I disagree with that. And that's ridiculous. And listen, that's fine and good. And it's okay to disagree. But uh, uh, if, if that's the case, then, then you come and do a video and present something better. You come and, and, and do that as well. I encourage you to do that. Don't just be a naysayer and say this isn't true, but then don't have a solution. All right. And when I look around the church, and when I, especially the Western church, I don't see much supernatural power. What am I making reference to? Mark 16, 17, and 18. You ever read this passage? C.S. Lewis once made a comment, and he said the most embarrassing thing in Scripture, I don't think this is true, by the way, but he said the most embarrassing thing in Scripture, the most embarrassing thing that Jesus ever said was this generation shall not pass away until all these things take place. And he believed that that was because he thought he was talking about Peter, James, John, and Andrew. And they did die, of course, and Jesus uh, still hasn't returned. He said that was embarrassing. The sad thing is, is that he didn't study the scripture because it's very clearly Jesus was making reference to the generation that would be alive at the time of the return of Israel to the land. That generation wouldn't pass away. More than likely, that's what he meant, or at least the, the, the generation that was around when the birth pang started, whenever that is. It could still be in the future. Poor misinterpret or misinterpretation of Scripture. Poor understanding of Scripture. We tend to do the same thing in Mark 16, 17, and 18. I've heard other people say, this is embarrassing because this isn't true. Hmm. All right, be careful. All of Scripture is true. All right? If you disagree with that, you're wrong. So if you have a problem with that, turn off the videos. Don't watch anymore. Don't comment. I'll delete your comments. Okay? This is for those of you who want to grow in your understanding of the Lord. And you want to be used by God for supernatural power. And I believe that that is for today. So Mark chapter 16, 17, and 18. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, in the name of Jesus, in the way, truth, and life of Jesus, not in just saying a name like abracadabra. It's not magic. You have to be walking in the way, truth, and life. This is what this study is about. Having the Holy Spirit power, which is about not my will, but his be done, submitting to God, resisting your flesh. What does Paul say? I treat my flesh as a slave. I train it. I rebuke it. I make it to submit. Western Christians aren't very good at that. Okay? In my name, they will cast out demons. We're casting out demons in the Western church? They will speak with new tongues. <laughs> I hear churches, they resist tongues. They come against tongues. Paul said, don't do that. You're disobeying God. Heathens resist against tongues. They will pick up serpents and they will not drink and, and they will drink deadly poison and it will not hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Now, of course, we have this. I'm not suggesting we should have snake handling churches. Don't get me wrong. That's, mis that's taking things out of context. The point that he's making is this. Things aren't going to harm you. You're going to lay hands on the sickness and it rebuke it in the name of Jesus and people will recover. We do we not? Maybe it's because we're not willing to put ourselves in a position that Jesus did. Okay? The Ten Commandments of Yeshua. Now, this is kind of loose. So, this is not a thus saith the Lord. But you will nothing that I'm going to say here is, is anything that Jesus didn't say. And this doesn't go against Scripture. Because Jesus said all of the Old Testament is still true at his time and still today. Heaven and earth pass away, my words will never pass away. So I'm not coming against anything. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm simply suggesting a way that you can look at scripture and kind of put it in a practical way for you to practice, for you to hone your flesh so that you're better in position to hear the Holy Spirit and receive the power. I practice this in my life. I encourage you to do the same. So in Matthew 
chapter uh, 20, uh, in, in, in Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40, Jesus says this. He says, love your God with all the heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And in doing this, you will fulfill the entire law. So that's the first two commandments, the two greatest commandments of the Ten Commandments. Love your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you're going to accomplish the first four commandments. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you're going to accomplish the next six, which then fills the full 10. So Jesus says that, but he doesn't stop there because then in, in Matthew chapter 10, verse eight, he says this, this is what you're going to do. You're going to heal the sick. You're going to cleanse the leper. You're going to raise the dead. You're going to cast out demons. And because you have freely received, you're going to freely give. There's five more. He says this, we are called to do these things. What did the disciples do? They were called by Jesus and he said, sit in a pew and hear me teach. No, he said, follow me. I think of a favorite movie of mine from when I was a kid, showing my age here, Karate Kid. And he goes to, to Mr. Miyagi and Mr. Miyagi says, I want to learn to fight because I got beat up. And Mr. Miyagi says, okay, wax my car. And he says, no, I don't want to wax cars. I want to fight. I want to learn karate. He says, okay, paint the fence. Paint the fence. Wax the car, wax on, wax off, right? What is Jesus doing with the disciples? It's the same thing. We want to do these great things. We want to walk. We want to learn about God. We want to do these, you know, and, and, and Jesus is like, okay, uh, we got to do, we got to walk first. We got to take care of the poor and the needy. You want to go preach great sermons? Okay, well, he who wishes to be great must be less. He who wants to be high must be low. He who wishes to be a king must be a slave. Are you hearing this? Wax on, wax off. Before Jesus leads us into supernatural power, he trains us with physical things. And he says, you've got to bridle your flesh and submit to God and love him. And you need to love your neighbor, which is taking care of their physical needs. And then after that, I'm going to send you out with my power. And you're going to heal the sick. And you're going to raise the dead. You're going to cast out demons. You're going to freely receive, so you're going to freely give. You're going to cleanse the leper. By the way, cleansing leper and healing the sick is two different things. I encourage you to do a study on that. And then finally, in Matthew 28, 19, and 20, what does he say? Three more, the last three. He says, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Make disciples. Making a disciple is not getting people to say a cute little prayer. Hmm. Or repeat after me and then sending them out so they can go and just live their life any way they want. Are they saved? Yes, but they're not going to grow in supernatural power. They're certainly not going to be doing greater things that Jesus did because they haven't cleaned out their closet of their dirty deeds. How do we clean out the closet of dirty deeds? By striving ourselves? And no, it's by stop living. Okay, look, Jesus had his disciples following him. Why? Not just because he wanted to teach them through their actions and through learning through him physically and kinesthetically, but also if they were spent all their time following him, they had no time to do what they wanted to do because Jesus knew that if they did what they wanted to do, they would continue to grow the seeds of sinfulness in their life. If you want to put yourself in a position that you are being used by the Holy Spirit power, you have to follow Jesus and allow him to uproot all the trash. This is what this stuff is for. Go! Feet shod with the gospel of peace last week. Go into all the world. Make disciples of all nations, which means they walk with you. They, they do the wax on, wax off. You become Mr. Miyagi. And they're saying, I want to go fight. And they're like, no, 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 no. Wax on, wax off. Paint the fence. Baptize them in the name of the Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And then number 10, teach them to obey all I've commanded you. Everything. In other words, so those of you who the one through nine were saying, wait, it's not just 10 commandments. Jesus said lots of other things too. Yeah, that's summed up in number 10. Teach them to obey everything in the red letter. And I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. We've got to get right with Jesus' commandments of kinesthetic action before we can move on to supernatural intention. God wants to know if you're ready and willing to do the difficult before he will endow you with those things that are beyond. Make your flesh a slave and obey the master. Till next time, be blessed and be a blessing.